Hello everyone and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm your host Sarah Scully and uh, we are having a bit of a snow day today as you can see behind me. We've just gotten about two feet of snow. Um, we've been having a lot of fun playing in it and shoveling it and moving it and shuffling out the sheep so that they can get to their water and get around. Um, and I thought I'd just share a little of the snow scene behind me. You can see the barn is right there. Um, You'll excuse me with this video if I seem a little self-conscious or seem to be looking in a weird place. Normally when I record a podcast, I put a like a blank text document over the video feed so that I don't get distracted by my own face. But I have something to show you on camera today and I want to make sure it shows up well. So we'll just roll with this. Um, today I want to share with you another dyeing experiment. And this is actually an over dye of the yarn that I dyed a couple of weeks ago. So if you haven't checked out that video, be sure to um, go back and look at that episode. I was talking about dyeing with food coloring because I think that's the most approachable and easy way to get into dyeing. If you've never dyed uh, yarn before, um, you probably have most of what you need laying around the house anyway. And um, it's a quick and easy and non-toxic way to get started with it. Um, if you wanted to dye something and you have children and you want to do that as an activity, um, it would be fairly safe for them as well. So I wanted to share my method for dyeing with food coloring um, and share some other resources for learning more. Now, the skein of yarn that I dyed in that video, um, as I said, it was an experiment. Um, I didn't really have a solid plan going into that. I had sort of a vague idea of what I wanted to do, but I also wanted to just experiment and see how that bit of yarn would turn out. And um, I did get a result and I, I wasn't entirely happy with it. Um, it was very interesting looking. It was very much what I would call sort of five-year-old birthday colors, um, bright blue and bright pink. And to my eye, the skein didn't have a cohesiveness, right? The colors, um, were very different from each other in terms of their tone or their energy or um, just something about them it looked kind of disjointed. So I decided to look at over dyeing um, because, you know, sometimes when you're getting started with dyeing, you don't really have a plan going in, you are experimenting, or maybe you just don't have the experiment, uh, the experience um, for your experiments to know that what you set out to make is going to be the colors that you end up with. And um, if that happens, if either you have an experiment that just doesn't turn out to be something attractive that you like, or maybe you're trying to go for a certain shade or tone and you just don't get it on the first try, um, you can often over dye and you may not end up with the exact result you wanted in the first place, but you can still take a yarn that was ugly and <laughs> turn it into something that might be more to your taste, right? And I use air quotes for ugly because everybody's taste is personal and everybody's opinion is their own and, and that's all fine, right? So what I like, you may not like and vice versa. But um, but when you're dying, often, you know, you sort of have a goal in mind or, or at least a, um, some parameters that you're looking for and you don't always get there. So over dying is a way to fix that or at least approach fixing it. Um, I will say with a caveat, basically the only way to guarantee that you're going to get a specific color when you over dye is to over dye with a very strong black dye, right? So if your yarn is just, you know, if it's already a dark shade and you don't like the color that it is, your best bet is just to over dye with black. Um, and you know, hey, black goes with everything, right? Um, <clears throat> in this case, though, I didn't want to um, take all the color out of the skein. I wanted to, to still do that. Um, but again, that sort of bright birthday cake pink and then the sort of moody, gothy blues, um, I didn't think the whole thing was going together. Um, it didn't sort of match itself. So what I decided to do was to take a royal blue um, case, cake icing dye and over dye the skein with that. Um, and so, you know, blue with pink, you're going to get sort of a lavender color. And my thought was, 
I can unify this game without losing some of the variegation, without losing some of the interest that I had created. So I still wanted multiple colors, multiple shades, and multiple values. I wanted light and dark, um, but I just wanted to have a more cohesive color. So here's this game. And if you can't see it, I'll put up another picture of it. But um, I think it turned out pretty well. So here's the overdyed portion. I'll put in a picture here um, while I'm talking so that you can see the original and remind you what that looked like. To over dye this skein, I basically repeated the same process I did in the last video. So I wet out the yarn, it had dried by then. I took my uh, cake icing dye and dissolved it in hot water. I added a lot of vinegar. I added more vinegar than I had used last time. So last time I used maybe a quarter or half cup I probably used two cups of vinegar this time just to make sure that that acid was really working on the yarn and affixing um, the dye. For some reason blue doesn't seem to strike or bite into the yarn as much as uh, red dye does, um, which is interesting and I need to learn more about chemistry and I need to learn more about that and, and why there's a difference between the way that different colors uptake onto yarn. Um, but that's why I added the extra vinegar, was to make sure that the acid was really working. I made sure my water was very, very hot, almost to boiling when I put the yarn in. And that seemed to work well. This did rinse out, and it did have a little bit of a hint of blue in the rinse water, but really nothing too bad. Um, and you can see in some parts of this, there's still some pink tones in it. Um, so it's reminiscent in some ways of the original dye job, but it's much more purpley and it's much more, to my eye, cohesive, right? Again, you've still got strong variation. You've got light spots over here. you got this very deep, almost squid ink, gothy section here. So you're still going to get a lot of variation in character here, but you are overall looking at something that's a little more I don't know, sea colors or just cool colors that all kind of go together. Um, and that's my tip for you with over dyeing is, you know, think carefully before you decide what color you're going to over dye with. Because again, if you try to combine all the colors that are available, you're going to end up with murky, kind of blah, muddy colored yarn, right? It's not even going to be like a rich chocolate brown. In order to get that kind of color, that nice, deep, saturated brown, um, you have to have more red and orange tones underneath. Um, so, you know, you have, you have to think carefully about over dyeing. So let's say you had a green yarn, but you weren't happy with the shade of green. You could kind of study it for a minute and figure out, okay, do I need this green to be more on the yellowy green side of things, or do I want it to be more in the teal blue kind of side of the equation, right? And so then you could pick your shade of over dye based on the direction you're trying to push things. Same thing if you've got, <clears throat> so I've tried getting um, purples in other occasions that came out sort of gray. They, they weren't really purple, they were just kind of a very washed out, um, vaguely purpley gray color, um, almost looking like, you know when you use stain remover on laundry and then the stain doesn't come all the way out, it's still kind of there, that kind of ghosty gray color. Um, so what would you do in that case? You know, you would you would say, okay, do I want, I want this blah, gray, almost purple yarn, do I want it to be more blue or more red? And then you could dye with a more saturated concentration and try to shift that into a more intentional looking shade. Um, so, so something to keep in mind. And again, I'll reiterate um, some of my advice from the last video on dyeing with cake dye is that if you are using something like a brown cake dye or black cake dye, um, I would put a drop into some water and sort of look at the tone and see if that's more in the red family, more in the green family, more in the blue family. Because combining that black dye with another shade 
of a brighter um, color is not just going to make that color darker, it's also going to shift it to whatever the base is for the black dye. So just a few tips, um, I hope that made sense. And if you are playing around with cake dye or food coloring, again, let me know. We'd love to see your results. Um, I dyed this skein of yarn basically to, to share this information with you, to play around, um, to have another crack at dyeing. I didn't really have a specific project in mind for this. And then a new podcast um, that I've just been recently following um, she's called the Quirky Monday Podcast. The host's name is Kalisha. She is running a make-along. Um, it's, it's broader than just a knit-along. It's different crafts. Um, she herself uh, engages in and practices different um, kinds of crafts. And her make-along theme is the season of Pisces. Now that goes from February to March um, with the ast astrological calendar. Uh, she's a Pisces, and because I'm also a Pisces, I thought it would be fun to donate this watery colored um, skein of yarn to that make-along. So I'm going to donate the skein, and I'm going to link to Kalisha's video where she talks about the make-along and the parameters. I'll link that in the show notes below. Um, and I invite you to check her out, whether you're interested in the make-along or not, or you're just looking for a new kind of multi- craft podcast um, or video podcast to um, to listen to and watch. Uh, she's, you know, very talented and very creative. And um, so I encourage you to check out um, her podcast and, uh, and see what that's all about. And if you have suggestions on other um, craft type podcasts, whether they are audio or video, um, whether they focus on a specific topic or if they're more general, um, I am looking for, for new things to watch, so I encourage you to leave a comment down below and make your suggestions on what you've been watching lately, and I'll check those out as well. Thanks again for joining us, and tune in next week. I think we're going to have a new recipe for you. It's been a little while since I've uh, shared cooking, so that'll be a fun one. Thanks a lot, and have a great week. Cheers. Cheers.